latest on October 9th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. One Category 5 is active today, that's Typhoon Hagibis yet again. We're seeing that Super Typhoon, the only thing populating the map today in terms of named storms on October 9th, Day 282 of the year. However, there are two invests in the Atlantic that could develop in the next five days, both as far as I know on moderate chances now from the National Hurricane Center 91 and 92L. Day 147 in the Eastern Pacific, no systems are active here, nothing to report for the time being. In the Western Pacific, Super Typhoon Hagibis is still or is again a Category 5, it's for the second time in this storm's life and in the southern hemisphere there's nothing going on down there it's all quiet again at this time super typhoon agabus has winds of 160 miles per hour and an estimated pressure of 900 millibars the storm has been looking pretty decent in the last few hours it's 349 miles from Hiroshima 19.8 north 140.4 degrees east the storm will probably weaken only slowly over the next few days, although it will quicken up the pace by the time we get towards the end of the week as those sea surface temperatures start to drop away. By the time it reaches Japan, it will probably be only a Category 1 or 2 only, I say. That will still be a ferocious storm, Stage 7 on the CDPS, and that wind field is going to increase as well. Here it is right now though, wind shear is fairly low, 5 to 10 knots and the storm's appearance certainly looks very good on these latest frames. We'll take another look at the storm again in just a moment, but it has been wrapping around uh, very nicely in the eye wall, uh, blowing up and out with the cloud tops, and the eye has been clearing. The North Atlantic, you can see the, both of the invests here, 91L out in the open Atlantic, that swirl there, which could turn tropical and become a tropical cyclone. And then the left-hand side, you've got all of that mess going on uh, east of Florida, well out to sea now, and that could become another storm that will just be shifting up the, the northeast over the next few days. And there's the tail end of it down there in the Caribbean. Lots of thunderstorms occurring in the Yucatan Channel. The Eastern Pacific looking rather quiet. Really, very little can be said about this basin today. Um, a few flare ups in the tropical zones, but really, there's hardly anything on tap for development over the next five days. One or two little interesting features down there in the Central Pacific. The Western Pacific, quite unavoidable, is Typhoon Agabus. It's quite large in terms of its spatial coverage. Um, its wind field uh, diameter extends around 400 nautical miles, which is pretty big. And um, it will only grow in size, which is why it's such a threat to Japan, along with some rainfall, which could reach 16 inches. The Australia and South Pacific region is pretty quiet. A few thunderstorms again blowing up across Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and also towards the east over the waters. The Indian Ocean, um, a lot of flare-ups occurring during the course of today, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. Things looking fairly quiet on this front as well today. So sea surface temperatures, the eastern Pacific around 29-30 degrees Celsius, Gulf of Mexico the same, cooling off a little bit further north though. The western Caribbean is still a hot spot for the uh, Atlantic at this time, um, still pushing 30-31 degrees Celsius. Further east, sea surface temperatures still warm, you can still see that cold trail from Lorenzo, I don't think they're going to recover the sea surface temperatures from that. Still 26 though in the eastern Atlantic, but I think the jig is up for this year over in that part of the ocean. And looking at the Indian Ocean, fairly warm in the northern uh, region, 30 degrees, and in the western Pacific. Still very warm waters for Hagibis, but the ocean heat content has taken a bit of a nosedive. Well, here is the storm itself, Hagibis uh, starting to still clearing out that eye. We were going to go with 165 miles per hour for this storm based on imagery an hour or two ago, but in latest frames, the eye wall has started to show signs of waning on the northern side, which is pretty much exactly what the HWRF called for yesterday in one of its forecasts. Um, for the storm, the eye wall to start to um, wane a little bit when the eye started to emerge. But still, it's a very powerful storm, 900 millibars roughly, thanks to its size and its initial peak. 
Well, these are the names on the naming list. The next name in the, in the Atlantic is Melissa. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Octave. In the Central Pacific, we're looking out for Ima. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list is Neoguri. In the North Indian Ocean, on list 8, we're looking out for Kiar. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far. And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter under the same name and you can get in touch with us on there as well. We'll be back again with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night with further updates on Hagibis in the meantime. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description. 